So let's look at energy, some simple energy stuff. Well, well, some of the basic energy stuff is that our internal energy. You could either look at it delta E or delta U, but the idea internal energy, internal energy, energy is the sum of all types of energy. Is the is the sum of all the energies. Typically, we look at it as heat plus work, because in most situations, that's where the majority of the energy is coming from. We're not looking at a molecule traveling at such and such a speed with such and such a mass. We're not looking at kinetic energy. Except for an oxidation reduction reactions, we're not looking very much at electrical energy. So typically, we're looking at just heat and work. Heat and work. To do this, it's really a simple summation. However, you need to make sure you understand the sign. When energy goes in, energy in, it's positive sign. Energy out, it's negative. So if I am absorbing heat, if I am absorbing heat, heat is going in. I would be taking in heat. Absorb heat. If I am releasing heat, energy is going out, would see a negative heat. Which is why if you were in lab, when we did, if, you, if you've done a Hess's Law lab or Enthalpy of Reaction lab, you look at, we looked at the Q of the water was positive number. But the Q of the reaction was a negative number. Because the idea is the reaction released heat. The, the tiny little atoms, the molecules come together, form bonds. These bonds produce energy. When they produced energy, that energy goes somewhere. Where did it go? The energy went into the water, into the coffee cup. And so the energy went up. The temperature went up in the coffee cup. The temperature went up in the water because heat was absorbed by the water because heat was released by the reaction. In this case, we would say Q surroundings and the reaction was Q system. One of the big things to remember is that Q surroundings must always be equal and opposite to Q system. The idea here is that energy is universally conserved. Energy has to come from somewhere, it has to go somewhere. It, energy is not just lost, it has to go somewhere, whether that's to the surroundings or into outer space, it's going somewhere. It just has to be transmitted. Work, you had to think of work being done on a system, work are being done by a system. When typically, when we think of work, we think of a gas within a piston, a gas within a piston. If the piston pushes down, we compress the gas, compress the gas. This is work a positive work, work done on the system. But when the gas is gonna expand and push the piston up, work is done by the system. The gas is pushing the piston, which can then turn the, the crank and like run up something else. This is the, the principle of a car that essentially we have a centric motor that we put gas in here, we burn it, it expands, it pushes this little piston crank and we can turn the wheels of our car. But typically we focus more on Q than we do on work. But if we were to do work, we can look at it as P delta V, negative P delta V, where P is the pressure, pushing down the pressure, 
the weight of this piston essentially versus the how much volume does that gas change? How much volume does that gas change? And we're allowed to figure that out. And so that becomes our work. Now, the other big thing we can deal with is how do we deal with heat mathematically? Heat is going to be our simple equation called Q equals M cat. MC delta T. M is our mass that we're heating. C is our specific heat. Heat. And delta T is our change in temperature. Now, here's one of the beauties here. When we're trying to figure out the sign of Q, as long as you say TF minus TI, we're going to get the correct sign of Q. So if I said I went from 50 degrees to 20 degrees, how would we calculate that? If I took, say, uh, 10 grams of metal with a heat capacity of 0 0.494 joules per gram C. Do you have to memorize this equation? Not really because of the units of heat capacity. The units of heat capacity tell us everything we need because if we do this. I'm sending this up. The heat, Q, 10 grams. Heat capacity, 494 joules gram degree C. Delta T is our 20 minus 50 degree C. So that's going to be negative 30 degree C. Degree C cancels out with degree C. Grams cancels with grams. What unit are we left? Unit of heat energy. In this particular problem, you would have a negative eight, a negative Q. You would have a Q of equals to negative 148.2 joules. We know it's negative, meaning heat is released because of the sign of our delta T. Had you done it 50 minus 20, you would have had a positive number. You would have had a positive number. And that would be technically wrong because heat isn't being gained, heat is being released. Heat, you're dropping hot metal into something and letting it cool off. So heat has to leave the metal, not go into the metal. But that is, oh, quick, how do we do Q? The worst case, let's do one more problem. Worst case is you have Two situations, two situations. Uh, where you're looking at the, uh, well, let's say 30 grams of the metal at, with unknown sp heat capacity. See, we don't know. And it goes from, let's say, 100 down to 39, 100 down to 39. And water, we have 50 grams of water with a heat capacity of 4.184. And it goes from 20 degrees to 39. What is the heat capacity of the metal? So what we have to do is we have to set both Q's equal to each other. We're going to say the Q of the metal is equal to negative Q of the water. Because the heat lost by the metal will be gained by the water. So calculating the Q of the water, we got put that negative up front, 50 times 4.184 times... 39 
minus 20 or 19. So 50 times 19 times 4.184. We'd get how much energy? 3974.8. And that is equal to 30 times uh, unknown times 39 minus 100. And so that would be negative 61. So we're going to take our 3974.8, our negative 3974, divided by negative 61. Then we're going to divide by our 30. And our heat, if I do that, I divide both sides by 30 and negative 61. 30 and negative 61. We're going to get our heat capacity is equal to 2.17. That's a little high for a metal, but that's fine. It's an unknown metal. Maybe it's a new metal. I don't care. Worst case scenario, we have to set two situations equal to each other. That's the hardest thing we could really do with a thing like this.